Right, well, we're um, continuing in our um, series on building, and today's uh, thought is on building a people after God's own heart. So the passage that we're going to look at is from Luke, and it comes from before the um, parable of the Good Samaritan. But let's just start by praying. Heavenly Father, we want to hear from you this morning. We want you to come and speak to our hearts, speak to our minds, Lord, and make us a people who loves you, a people who wants to live after your own heart, Lord. We invite you now to come, Holy Spirit, and speak to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Right, so um, if you've got your Bible there, it's Luke 10, 25 to 28. Um, so I'll just read that. On one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit et eternal life? What is written in the law, Jesus replied. How do you read it? He answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbour as yourself. You have answered correctly, Jesus said. Do this and you will live. So let's look at those, let's look at those things. Love the Lord your God with all your heart. Well, how do we show someone that we really love them? How do we give them what is potentially our most valuable asset? That's time, really. Spending time. If you have someone you really love, you spend time with them and you spend time one-to-one -one and you don't look at your text message because it beeps in the middle of your one-to-one -one with them. You don't check your emails. Not if you really want to be in good communion with that person. If we want to love God with all our heart, we have to concentrate on spending time with him alone and un, unbothered by other things. Uh, we need to spend time in his word. We need to spend time listening to others expound his word as well. <clears throat> There's some fantastic things on YouTube, or if you've ever read novels, or not well, actually novels, but Christian books that you've enjoyed, it's really worth looking up those people's websites. Um, seeing what other talks they've got, look on YouTube, look on the St. Swithin's uh, list of any sermons that you've missed, um, particularly if they're on something that you feel God speaking to you about at the moment. So we love the Lord our God with all our heart when we spend time with him, when we read his word, when we listen, when we're challenged by it, and when we obey it. How about loving God with all our soul? What is our soul? Well, my soul is the Jenny bit the bit that makes me, me. James, it's his bit. Wendy, what makes Wendy, Wendy? Or Helene, Helene? Or Keith, Keith? What makes us individual? What makes us different? Have we committed those things to the Lord? Something um, I was challenged to do in the church many years ago was at the beginning of each year, 1st of January, to sit down and to go through with God the things that, the strengths, the talents, the areas of, of joy, what gave me joy, and to write them down and then commit them to God and say, Lord, I give you back these things. I want to use these things for you. And even little things, like it might be like something like, Lord, I love baking cakes. You know, anything like that, just write them down. It can be the really big things like prophecy. It can be the little things like baking cakes and just give them to the Lord and say, this is me, Lord. This is the me you've created. And I give myself back to you. And I want you to use me, Lord, in these areas. And um, I did that. And then I sort of forgot about the list. And then <clears throat> in a year's time, we were reminded to do it again. And I thought, oh, yeah, I've got the list from last year. And I got that out and looked at it. And it was so exciting to see the things that I'd suddenly started to get involved with, the things I was doing that were direct answers to the things that I'd given to God. Remarkable. You know, even little things, as I was saying, like, you know, making cakes wasn't one of them, but you know, even just little practical things like that. Because um, God wants to use everything that he's given us and we give it back to him and consecrate it to him. Um, so we want to love 
the Lord our God with all our soul, with all ourselves, strengths, talents, gifts, areas we've been blessed in. And then we need to love the Lord our God with all our strength. And um, how do we build up our strength? What is our spiritual gym? Well, physically, we would go to a gym, we'd go out on a bike ride, we'd do Pilates, we'd do exercises. Um, not always comfortable stretching ourselves, forcing ourselves, putting time aside. And that's the same. If we want to love the Lord of God with all our strength, that means putting our all in. And that means sometimes cutting out things that we'd rather do, or we feel we'd rather do, but actually aren't as good for us. Um, spending time loving God with all our strength means just putting everything we've got, <coughs> got into it. Um, Paul talked about beating his body into submission and um, running the race to win the prize, to win the crown, straining forward to get the, the crown. Um, not always comfortable, but if we want to be pe people after God's own heart, we want to build up our strength in loving him, we need to commit time and um, commitment to that. And then what about my, our mind, loving God with all our mind? Well, obviously what comes to to mind is uh, reading the Bible, spending time reading the Bible. Um, but it's more than that. I think it's about keeping our mind clean as well. And um, in Philippians 4, 8, um, Paul says to us, he says, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, pure, lovely, admirable, excellent or praiseworthy think about such things fill our mind with good things and also elsewhere jesus talks about our eyes and how we use our eyes and that um if we look at good things um like god's word and so on our mind is full of light um but equally if we look at bad things our mind we're allowing darkness into our minds to cloud our minds so if we want to love god with all our mind then we need to be committed to using our mind in the right way and not using it in the wrong way. And I think that's an area that we can ask the Holy Spirit to, to prod us in. Lord, remind me, remind me when I'm straying off, when I'm watching a television programme and just these dodgy things come up, you know, what evil people do in evil places. We're not meant to let our minds go there. And it's so easy, or watching something on television, it's part of a programme, you know, do you want to stop halfway through when you've still got half the story to go? Lord, do you want me to watch this? Or actually, Lord, do you want me to say, no, that's not right, I'll switch it off. So I think if we want to love God with all our mind, um, we need to be disciplined in that area as well. And remember, whatever is true, noble, right, pure, lovely, admirable, excellent or praiseworthy, we need to think about those things. And the second part of his answer to Jesus was that we need to love our neighbours as ourselves. So how do we do it and who is our neighbour? Well, the um, story that Jesus goes on to talk about is the story of the Good Samaritan. And of course, the person who turned out to be neighbor, the neighbour was not somebody who in normal life would have had anything to do with the Samaritan, but he was the person who met the other person's need. He was the person who showed him love. So we have our obvious neighbours, we've got our neighbours who live next door, we have the person in the post office, we have the people we bump into. Um, but we need to say to the Lord, you know, each morning when we commit our day to the Lord, Lord, who is my neighbour today? Who do you want me to bless today? And in what way? Um, and we need to remember, it might help us to remember, that it's more blessed to give than to receive. So actually, in blessing other people, we receive the most tremendous blessing ourselves. So it's not even extra generous to go out and bless other people because God will bless us the most amazingly um, just by the joy we receive in doing it. Uh, Matthew 5.45 says that God sends his sunshine and rain on all. And in that sense, rain is seen as good because it was seen as feeding the crops. God gives, God loves the world, God loves non-Christians every bit as much as he loves Christians. I think sometimes perhaps we think God loves us more, but he doesn't. 
and he wants to see the world saved. He wants us to be a blessing to others, but he also wants to speak to others through us. He wants to reach others. You know, um, when God created Eden, um, paradise, uh, God walked with Adam in the cool of the evening. God wanted to spend time with him. And God wants to spend time with us, all of us. That's why he's created us. He wants us to be in relationship with him. And he wants us to use others, to, to use us to win others for him. Um, because he loves everyone that he's made. So um, Jesus answers the, um, the teach the law. He said, um, you've answered correctly, do this and you will live. So what is God's heart after? He wants us to spend time with him. He wants us to love him with all our heart, time, listening, obeying, reading his word. Just sitting down with him, you know, I think sometimes sitting down with God in, and just enjoying his company, I think is, is um, something that he loves. It, it, it doesn't have to be a really holy time. It can just be sitting with God and just, just talking with him like a friend. I know at a time that was really difficult in my life. Um, I find it difficult to put things into words and the things life was just so crowding in on me. And I used to sit and I used to say, oh, Lord, you know, oh, Lord, you know, you know, Lord, you, you know, I don't need to tell you, you know. And the most amazing comfort and it was the most amazing time of blessing. Um, just just sitting with him. Um, and I just say that because there may be people, well, particularly in this time of lockdown, obviously, but others who perhaps don't have a lot of strength, aren't able to get out and about. Um, but actually God loves you just to sit there with him and uh, enjoy his presence. So we'd love God with all our heart, with all our soul, the bit that's individual to us, to use what he's given us, um, with all our strength, setting side, time aside, beating ourselves into submission, putting away other things we feel like doing and saying, no Lord, this is your time, I'm going to spend it with you. And with all our mind, thinking about good things, thinking about his word, um, getting ourselves right with him, and then loving our neighbor as ourself. So um, let's pray, shall we commit ourselves to him and ask for his Holy Spirit to strengthen us in these areas. Father, we pray that you will work in us to make us a people after your own heart to love people as you do, to commit ourselves to serving people as you do, to commit ourselves to the time and commitment of spending time with you and loving you and pleasing you. So Holy Spirit, we invite you to invade our lives, to come and guide us and challenge us and fill us and strengthen us to live a life that's truly pleasing to you. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.